What's up, guys? I'm Mark, and welcome back to the segment. Today, we're actually looking at some of the protection that's offered out there via the helmets. And we're going to be looking at the 6D ATB 2T helmet. I've had a good five months in this helmet, and I want to give you guys a review and what I think about this helmet right here. All right, guys, welcome back. This is the ATB 2T. And if you see me out on the trails, you'll notice that I don't normally ride in a half shell. I'm generally in a full face. But when I do ride in a half shell, this is going to be my go-to helmet for a number of reasons. And a lot of it is because of the technology that the owner and CEO of this company has thought of to make sure that not only are our skulls protected while we're out there in case of a crash, but also most importantly, our brain. So take a look at what's so unique about this. And first of all, I'm gonna start off with the outer shell. The, the nice part about this helmet is yes, it is physically, physically attractive. I think it's a really nice looking half shell. You do have a nice visor here that's got a three point click system in there. One, two, three. Again, you get your low, medium or high. And then a lot of a lot of helmets nowadays are doing the Fidlock system. This one also is Fidlock, which is great. I love Fidlock because a lot of times I throw my helmet on and I'm pedaling away and I could just one handedly put that on my head and have it nice and secure with that Fidlock system. Also, what's nice about this helmet is it does have a sunglass compartment if you're climbing and you don't want sweat dripping in your glasses as you're going up. You have a little garage here. In here, there are two plastic sleeves that are made to catch the arms of your sunglasses. So whatever glasses you decide you want to wear, you can put them up there as you climb. This also has a nice ventilated system to keep the air flowing and help keep the sweat down to keep you nice and cool while you're out there on those hotter days. Also, this is what makes this helmet so unique. You can see right here, it says, ODS, Omnidirectional Suspension. And I'm gonna let the CEO of this company tell you what this means. And this is why I love this helmet. Our ODS technology is made up of two layers of EPS interconnected with isolation dampeners. And it's designed to compress and shear omnidirectionally within its environment to provide improved protection for the athlete. This ability to displace and compress reduces the transfer of angular acceleration energy and also low threshold energy to the brain or the head in the event of an accident. So we accomplish this by separating the helmet into two layers. We have an outer layer of EPS that is mated to the shell and we have an inner layer of EPS that is up against the wearer's head. In the event of a crash impact, those two layers have the ability to compress and come together. They can shear omnidirectionally within themselves, reducing angular acceleration. And that low energy performance comes from the ability of the suspension on lower impacts. By having suspension system in the helmet, the helmet is active at a much lower energy demand than a traditional helmet design. So with that, the two liners are, can float and compress and shear within themselves. And if the energy is high enough, the two layers come together, the EPS takes over, and basically we have everything there necessary to manage high energy strikes as well. So that is what is really great about this helmet is it does have this omnidirectional suspension in it. And like he was saying, if you look at the inside of this helmet, and I know everything is dark and black, but I'm hoping you guys can see this a little bit. If I show you, you have your EPS right here, which is the foam that is in majority of all helmets, the EPS. That is the expanded polycysteine type of foam. And what's great about that foam is that when it gets impacted, it crumples, it bends, but it doesn't retake its shape. That's why a lot of times in our helmets, when we have a big dinger to the dome, we get rid of that helmet because you can see that that foam has been compromised. That's the EPS doing its job. This helmet has two layers of EPS in it. You have the layer that's connected to the shell, and then there is a layer that goes around the dome of the shell on the inside. Now, what's really unique about this helmet is that it does have this foam right here. This foam right here is called the EPP expanded polypropylene. And what's neat about expanded polypropylene or EPP is that when this takes a hit, 
this is meant in like lower speed impacts. It is meant to bend, be flexible, but also retain its shape. So you have something that's going to help retain its shape and take a hit. And then you have your EPS, which is made to crumple. So you have EPP and EPS in this. Not only do you have those layers in there, but they also move independently of each other. So you can see here that the EPP moves independently from the EPS, and that is from the towers that are inside here. And these towers are the suspension pieces that are in there. And it's hard to see. You'd really have to, sh I'd really have to show you a dissection of the helmet. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. In this critical area of energy management, low threshold energy, as well as in the angular energy management, a traditional helmet has no capability of addressing and or mitigating those energies based on its single liner system, or for that matter, even a dual density liner system. In low energy threshold impacts, when we talk about the topic of that, we're really looking at the ability to absorb energy in a, in a much smaller range or lower threshold range than the typical EPS materials designed to absorb energy for. And that's due to the uh, test standards that are out there today that the helmet manufacturers have to meet. Those standards have been derived from old information that was uh, basically trying to protect the skull. And today we're looking at the folks of trying to protect the brain, what's inside the skull. In our typical types of crashes that we would have in a motorcycle, there is a high percentage of those crashes that fall into what we call low threshold impacts. And if we talk about low thresholds from a number perspective, it's some number below the testing velocities that the helmets have been designed for. All helmet manufacturers have to meet the high velocity test impacts, but none of them are required to meet anything below that. And the medical community is defining that these are the areas that we have to start protecting the brain at, much better than a traditional helmet does today. Because of the high certification test velocities that all helmet manufacturers have to meet, it simply makes a simple liner system too stiff to mitigate uh, low energy threshold and provides no opportunity for angular acceleration. 60s technology has inspired other manufacturers to get back to the drawing board and are uh, starting to offer different solutions, but we find nothing out in the marketplace that offers the range of protection that the ODS uh, provides from low to high velocity impacts, uh, including angular acceleration mitigations. So much tech going into these. So here you are, you are covered with your EPP and your EPS and the towers and the suspension. Basically, this is MIPS on steroids right in here <laughs> in your traditional helmet look, but packed with a ton of technology to keep dome working when you are on and off the bike. So if you guys are interested, I'm actually going to take you over to what some of the uh, types of helmets you can get. Now, these, now, the ATB 2T Ascent helmet is a little pricey compared to some of the other half shells, but it's still within range in the marketplace. The colors that they come in, you can get this helmet in the all black right here. You also have an option to go black on the top with camo on the bottom. If you want to rock what I'm rocking here, this is the white with the black bottom and the red highlights on it. And then if you want to rock what my buddy Joey Yates on Cage MTB is doing, he's got the kind of the desert camo-ish looking tan up top and then the black on the bottom. Three more colors here for you. If you want to go a little more vibrant, you can get this. Hey, look at me. Don't hit me. If you're texting and driving while I'm on the side of the road type of color <laughs> in your green, you also have your dark navy blue. And finally, your uh, kind of like your matte black color right there so that is the 60 helmets in a nutshell i hope this has been interesting for you guys this is something that i would highly recommend the atv 2t if you're putting it up there against other helmets in the market um, a lot of people say this thing looks a little big on you but i don't care if i if it looks a little big on me i'd rather have good protection than look a little big because I know what's packed up in here but this is what it looks like on me with my sunglasses and it all locked up right there that's the 60 ATV 2T side shot front shot side shot again and then of course you have your adjuster in the back right here to get it just to the right spot for you
So if you're looking for a half shell, I highly recommend this one for safety. You just never know when you're going to need it. Hopefully you never will, but you should rather and always be prepared to use it and not need it than to need it and not use it. Hope this has been helpful, guys. Look forward to seeing you all out on the trail. 6D. ATB 2T. I said it. EPP. Expanded polypropylene. It's a good Scrabble word.